Wikipedia says birria is a Mexican dish, which is a meat stew traditionally made from goat meat, but occasionally made from beef, which we're doing today, or mutton. Boys, what's mutton? Lamb. What kind of lamb? There's different kinds of lamb. Well, older lamb. Young lamb is lamb, up to like 12 months or something. But apparently after you get your incisors, you become a mutton. Not 100% sure, I just know, I've always known mutton as old lamb, which sounds gross. Give me the oldest lamb you have. <laughs> Wait, there's a Seinfeld episode. Seinfeld, uh, he, goes, he goes to that restaurant with the woman with the giant hands, and she orders mutton. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's the sound of freedom. Sound of freedom. You probably can't hear it. We can hear everything. Uh, but, it's like this, this today, one of the greatest things ever said to myself, I better not have breakfast because I want to eat a ton of the beef birria tacos. They are that good. And we're using like dried chilies to get the sauce going for this. <laughs> Let's get it blow your mind. Here we go. We begin with our chilies that we need to soften. But first we're gonna get rid of the stems and the seeds inside. First, the guajillo chilies. No and stems, no seeds, no sticks? No stems, no seeds, no sticks. He doesn't get it. I get it, just like I used to de-stem, de-stick my weed back in the days, come on. When weed was weed, <laughs> and it wasn't designer, it wasn't fancy, <laughs> and there was stems and seeds. Look, uh, see, see what came out, it's crazy. There's a lot of seeds, we don't need these. No stems, no seeds, no sticks? Look, I live in Southern California and Dried chilies are readily available at pretty much any supermarket here. If you don't live in an area that has readily available dried chilies, you order these online, no sweat. And if you don't get every single seed out, don't worry about it, just the majority, right? So these we're gonna put into our hopefully working bullets to turn it into a delicious sauce. So let's just get all the seeds out here and move on. How spicy are these guys? They're not too spicy. I mean, by the time they get in with this, this is gonna bring some beautiful spice, but nothing crazy over the top. But we do know that the seeds and the membranes are really where most of the heat in a chili is. So if you get most of this stuff off, you're gonna be fine. It's quite fun, actually. And when you get the guajillos done, go to the pasillas. Not much of a stem here, we don't want it for sure. Let's open this guy up, and there they are. What these will do to the flavor in this dish is really outstanding. You want to find these. And if you can't find them, uh, email Max and he'll send you some. <laughs> Won't you, Maxie? Of course. Well, Chance will, but I'll tell him so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Here's what we do, we get rid of these seeds, stems, no sticks, and there's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add two cups of boiling beef broth to this, just like this. Let's push these guys down a bit. Beautiful. We'll throw the lid on. We're gonna let this sit for 15 minutes till they soften up. And while they do, we move on to the beef. And here's what we're dealing with. I have in front of me approximately three pounds of boneless short rib. Beautiful, isn't it? You could use a stewing beef for this, like pot roast beef, that kind of stuff. But this boneless short rib was... <clears throat> oh, holy <laughs> shit. Max's stupid robot almost took out the steaming pasillas and guajillas. Jesus. I was gonna say, but this boneless short rib was virtually the same price as the other stuff, so... I'm using this. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna sear this in a pan. I just wanna cut it into sort of smaller pieces than this. And then 
We're going to season everything with just a touch of oil. Spread everybody out. Gets a little oil everywhere. We'll turn it over to the other side. Now we season, at this point, only with kosher salt and pepper. And that looks like this, and you can be fairly generous. Flip them over to the other side. And when they're done, in they go to our waiting hot Dutch oven for searing all the way around. So we'll throw our pieces in. You want to hear the sizzle? Because that means it's hot enough in two parts so we don't overcrowd it and bring down the temperature too much. The goal is simple. Nice golden brown on all sides. We'll take it out and do the other half. I hear people talking about making dishes like this and saying, ah, you could skip this step. I'm telling you, don't skip this step. This is all about building flavor because this color right there is just added flavor. So don't ignore it. And remember, we're not cooking them. We're just coloring them. And so when you've got beautiful color all the way around, let's just take them out. And then we'll put the other half in. Same thing. They get color all the way around. And when these guys are done as well, if they come, now it's time for some onion. So a little splash of oil. And one yellow onion gets dropped in and we start to soften it. And you see all this stuff on the bottom? We've talked about it before. Remember what that is called? The fond. Fond, F-O-N-D. Well, we're gonna get that up in a minute. It just needs a little liquid. So let's soften these guys a bit. Give the onions three, four minutes. Now we're ready for some garlic. And that was about, oh, I don't know, six cloves chopped up, rough, shot of oil. We let it sit, get a little fragrant, two minutes. And when it smells great, in we go with the liquid that will help lift the fond and add some tang, apple cider vinegar. So that's about three tablespoons. And you look, you just see the liquid steams all this deliciousness off the bottom of the pot. Again, that's just straight flavor right there, which is why we want it so desperately. Wait, I'm not desperate for it, but I do definitely want to take advantage of it. You're desperate. I'm not desperate. You're desperate as f You're thirsty as f You shut up. Give this a second to boil a bit. Get rid of a little bit of that liquid. And then we come back in with our beef. Remember this. These guys come in. And maybe the most important part of the beef is the liquid that came off it, so for sure that goes back in. We give it just a little push around. Now we can kill the heat and get back to our sauce and the soaking chilies. All right, here's our steaming fellows. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Okay, here we go. First, we put in about a tablespoon of oregano. Mexican oregano, of course. Then about a teaspoon of cumin. That looks like a teaspoon, right? Yeah. A couple teaspoons of coriander. I mean, really, is it gonna make that big of a difference? I don't think so. And either two chipotle chilies or the equivalent, because I've got this jar of already mashed up ones. Yum. The smoky heat that that will bring us is going to be fantastic. Pinch of salt and pepper. Nice. And now a 15 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Oh God, I hope I'm not loading this guy up too much. <laughs> oh no, this is, this is just going to be trouble. It does seem like something you would do. It does, but I don't, can, my blender's not here. I would normally use a blender, but I don't have one here, so. So now we seal it tight because we don't want any mistakes. 
If only you had come prepared. Here we go. On we go. And remember, we're missing a, an ear, so I've got to use a chopstick to make this work. Please don't explode or anything bad. It's working! I will open this carefully. And look what we've got. Damn. Do you realize what magic this is going to be? How incredible this is going to be? All right. Let's get this. We'll pour it on top of our beef. Here we go. Oh, my. If you only knew. Well, you're about to. Gorgeous. We'll just give this a little mix around. Get everybody covered. You want your liquid level coming about to the top of the meat. And this is fine. If it was too low for some reason, if you had too much meat but didn't increase this part, just add some more broth or some water just to get it up to that level. Put a lid on it and we're ready. This is now going to go into a 350 degree oven. It's already heated. Don't have to wait for that. It goes in and uh, it's going to get two and a half to three-ish hours. If your oven isn't tracking right at temperature, you might give it a little longer. But when you can take a fork and push it into a piece of the short rib and it just goes like a deflated balloon, you know you're ready. If you don't have an oven, on the stovetop, no problem. For about the same time, put it on the stovetop, bring it to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, then put the lid on, then walk away. Maybe check it at the two to hour and 15 minute mark just to make sure everything's fine. If it needs more liquid, throw some broth in but I think you're gonna be fine. I'm gonna see you in a second with this already done. We're back and here we are. Oh my, look at that. Let's just have a little scope in here, shall we? Oh, did you see that? I moved that piece of meat and look at it. It just is, it just is <laughs> falling apart. Oh my gosh. It's amazing, it's amazing. So let's take a few pieces out, shall we? Cut with a spoon. This is what a little time does, ladies and gentlemen. It just makes this glorious with these amazing, deep, rich flavors. So by itself, this is pretty special and we should try a bite. Here's what I like. See this, these little bits of fat in here? That is just adding flavor all over the place. So might as well, I mean, somebody's got to try it before we taco it, right? Yeah. So here we go. Max and Chance. Thank you. On three. One, two, and three. Oh. Oh my God. I need to sit down. Oh my gosh. Not spicy. Rich in flavor. But this camera's working, right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I would use short rib, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, I got one more child over here that's got to eat. Have a bite of this. That one? That one. There you go, sweetheart. Thanks, Father. Oh my gosh. Damn, son. Damn, son. All right, let's make a taco, shall we? Let's do it. This is pretty simple. So here's how this goes down. This is rich, delicious, amazing oil from this. So we'll get a little bit on our tortilla. The tortilla now goes right on the flat top. On we go. <laughs> so we want to get this a little bit crispy. So just let it sit there for a second. Don't rush anything. Where do you see how simple this is? I mean, a corn tortilla would be traditional in this case. So I'm not using corn. Well, I'm using half corn, half uh, wheat. It's a hybrid, but I like this hybrid. So I'm a fan of it. I'm going to use it. All right, so here's what we do. We take our friend, we flip him. Look at that. That's what you want. We flip him over. Now we take some of our amazing beef area. It's all right. We'll put it right there. Throw a little cheese on top of them. And then fold this kid over. There you go. 
Maybe just a little drizzle more. That's what we're talking about. Now this guy, we want to get crispy on both sides to eat him. So he'll get one flip now back. And boys, I don't know about you, but you know what? I'm ready. And that's it. It's that simple. That's it. Just like that. Couple things. One, open your buddy up. Wow. Give him a little white onion, tiny bit of cilantro, and a little bit more of this juice inside. Good, good God. Okay, tiny bit more, because I know this is where the magic is. Now, that is something that we want to eat right effing now. Honestly, are you kidding me? Oh my God. What some people like to do is serve it with a little side of that uh, stew juice sauce for dipping. But this. That's a juicy taco. Is, uh, it look mm, unbelievable. This would be the perfect time for you to subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Let us know that you dig what we do. We're not insecure. We just love to know. Holy crap. Oh, I want that. Uh-uh. Oh, man. Oh, my God. This is the best thing ever. Ever. One more bite. Thanks for hanging. You got to do this. You got to do this. Mm.